Greetings from the New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park. The National Park Service is comprised of 419 sites, each one telling their unique part of the American story. Here, we tell the story of America's greatest gift to the world, jazz. At New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park, it is our mission to enhance the understanding and appreciation of jazz music. We accomplish this through workshops, educational programs, and of course, musical performances. Find out more about us on our Facebook page or at our website at www.nps.gov backslash jazz. For the visually challenged, we would like to describe what the video will look like. Fred Kasten will be conducting the interview from a desk with an overhead microphone. The person being interviewed will be responding to Fred's questions via their own home setup utilizing their own in-home tools. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy Talking Jazz with Fred Kasten. Go all the way back to uh, where you're from, man. Where, where'd you grow up? I grew up in St. Charles Parish. Um, I went to Hornville High School and Landry Middle School and Luling Elementary uh, in St. Charles Parish. Did and, you uh, live in uh, live in Hornville proper or outside of Hornville? Hornville, um, and I started coming uh, to uh, New Orleans uh, around high school uh, to go mm -hmm. to NOCA. Mm -hmm. Well, as a youngster growing up in Hanville over there on the Best Bank, uh, did right. you uh, did you uh, get interested in music pretty early, or, or when when did you get interested in music? Um, I don't know. It just it just uh, it started uh, that my uh, sister had had a toy keyboard that I would just kind of bang on and play on, and then uh, people would say, you know, that he started picking out melodies I saw on TV, and people were like, hey, you sound like you have some promise, sound like you have some talent. So like, you know, he's kind of playing music. So uh, uh, my family uh, married into uh, my uncle's stepfather remarried a lady who taught piano. Oh. So we then we knew someone who taught piano. So then I got started taking piano lessons and playing, uh, you know, classical music and, and sight reading and all those types of things. The uh, keyboard, little keyboard your sister had, was just like a little two octave toy piano? Yeah, kind of yeah, just like toy piano. And then once I started taking the lessons and, and I showed some some promise, I got a real keyboard. Yeah, a, 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 a piano, acoustic piano? Uh, it wasn't until I was uh, around 16 that I got acoustic uh, piano. Uh, um, so, so an electric keyboard of some kind? Yeah, I started out with the electric keyboard. And what and what uh what did you start on? What uh, do you remember what that one was? I what keyboard? No. Yeah. I re I remember the first when I the first major keyboard I bought that was like a Casio from oh, Radio yeah. Shack and that was like <laughs> a big deal cuz it had like the speakers on it and it, you could play beats and I was might have been around 13 or 14 and that was like a serious instrument for me at the time, you know. How old were you, Kyle, when you got the, those first lessons with uh, through the uh, kinfolk? I started at uh, nine. Started playing uh, the official lessons at nine, and then I started playing in church at the age of twelve, mm -hmm. and then started uh, playing jazz like around sixteen. Uh, were, were you? Uh, did you like it when you first started taking the lessons? Uh, how did you react to it? Uh I mean, I enjoyed it, but it was, you know, at the time it was more, it was more of a, of an activity. I, I didn't necessarily at that point, uh, decide that I wanted to be, uh, a musician as a profession. I actually wanted to be an architect and, uh, went to college for architecture and ended up getting a full scholarship in music. So that's, <laughs> that's how it, that's kind of how. Yeah. That's how it works, right? <laughs> yeah. That's how becoming a professional musician for me kind of got started. Uh, well, the architecture thing, were you a, a kid that liked to draw or, or build yeah, things? Yeah, I was, I was very interested in art and, and, and drawing and landscaping, and I still am. Uh -huh. So that you've kept up that interest, even though that didn't become your pursuit in yeah, life? Yeah, I actually, I, actually do, uh, I actually do some art uh, still. 
by paint and do large pieces. Is the piece behind you one of yours? This is not one of mine. I could show you some of mine, but th this is this is not one I did. But well, if, if if we get a chance, or if you want, if it's easy enough, uh, we'd like to see. Yeah, I, I'm point. right here on my laptop. I could just I could just uh, whirl it around. Yeah, so, all right. So, so, show show, show some some of, Show you some of my uh, my pieces here. This large piece here. This is the one I did. This is actually one of the first large pieces that I did. Is that acrylic? Yes, it's acrylic paint. Yeah, uh, right well, here uh, my piano. All right. Yeah. We might have to get you to play here in a minute. <laughs> and this is this is another one here. Well, as a uh, youngster, uh, what what kind of medium were you just a drawer, or what or what did you have uh, watercolors or anything that you worked with? Uh, mostly drillers? mostly drawing when I was when I was younger, and then I got into uh, like drawing homes and landscapes and uh designing houses you know yeah so that was a major interest uh maybe even a bigger interest uh when you first got to college than than music yeah i mean i, I always was interested in music I, I was thinking of maybe possibly minoring in music so i get right. to college and i you know get get all my architecture classes together so i went over to the music building is to check it out, maybe audition to see if I can get a minor. And then they ended up offering me uh, a full scholarship. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll give this music thing a shot. And then kind of once I just decided to really look, like focus on it, I've, I've just never turned back since. You mentioned, uh, I see, um, Got your, I think, first acoustic piano, you said 12 or 13 or? Is, uh, 16. Or was 16. The first, uh, uh, piano, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, before that, were you playing anything other than electric keyboards? Did you try other instruments? Uh, I, well, I started playing organ in church, and I also grew up playing drums in church, uh, too. So I've been playing Hammond and drums. And um, in school, in school band, you know, there's like no piano. So I, I <laughs> played played the drums in the school band and, and was in, uh, you know, the state honor band and all of those in, in, the, in the percussion section and on the drum line and the marching band. So drums was always kind of like my band instrument. Yeah, what, uh, were you a snare drummer or bass drummer? Uh, what, uh, cymbal played... player? I played uh, I played quads and I played uh, bass drum in the marching band and in the, in the concert band, symphonic band. I played anything: xylophone, snare drum, bass drum, cymbals, what, whatever. Full whatever. percussion. In the, yeah, full percussion. Uh, well, do you do you keep up with that? Do you still uh, you got a drum set you work on and all? Yeah, I have I have, actually have a, a studio here in my house and I have drums. Uh, so I just kind of just finished uh, recording my next CD and I started oh, okay. out just by, by playing all the instruments myself and then like having different musicians come in and do sessions. Right. You know, so you had click, guys. Had click Her, tracks, let's say. Her, right. Herlin Riley and, and, and Shannon Powell. Whoa. They, they, came, they came in and recorded and I was like, who's that on drums? I was like, yeah, that, that's me. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> you know you had yeah. to get a real a real drummer to come in and, and, and make it happen. Well, you got two pretty real ones there. <laughs> yeah, they're the, the two uh, the two uh, drummers on my next record. So I actually just finished it uh, about a week ago. So, so this is follow to, up to uh, Rookie of the Year. Yes, it needs to get uh, mixed and mastered, um, and then uh, should be done. Well, so you, how did you get started playing in church? Was that a church that you went to, or uh, how did that get going? Uh, um, uh, yeah, I started the church that I went to uh, growing up. It's I think they had like a, a a kids Christmas program, you know, so they got a kids choir or a kids band together, and and I and I um, joined in that way. But uh, I, when I was about 16, I used to play at about four, well, I used to play about four or five different church services a Sunday. And I got involved in that, like, you know, like people found out that I played and it's like, yeah, we need someone at our church or someone my mother worked with, you know, was like, you know, needed an organist. So right. she would kind of recommend. So that kind of pushed me in in different directions, playing for different churches and different denominations. 
Um, so that that's how that just kind of got built up. I would imagine. Church. Yeah, some of those uh, church services probably featured some of the similar music to your classical instruction and some some gospel. Yeah, I've probably I've probably played nearly every popular denomination of yeah. church. You know, I grew up in in Catholic church, but I've also played in Baptist church and uh, Kojic and Episcopalian and Pentecostal and right. full gospel, and you know, so I right. got involved in all of it. Well, that's that's a great experience for a young developing musician. Absolutely, it's it's like I always say, playing in churches is, is like like the best ear training, you know, oh, right. I, I went to, you know, school for music and they, they give you ear training where they play two notes and like, well, hear this interval or, you know, hear this chord. But when you're playing in a church, someone will just start singing and you got to like make that into a song or figure out what song they're in or right. figure out what key they're in, like in, in seconds. So that's, that's the best ear training. And I was also playing like in Catholic, Catholic church and playing, pipe organ and reading music and playing piano and playing gospel and playing hymns. So it was like, I was just kind of pulled in all of these di different directions at a young age. And then I got to Noka and started playing jazz. So, you know. Was, was that, how did you go connect with Noka? Had you been hearing about it or did you know people who um, went there? I, I didn't know anyone that went there and I didn't know very much about it at the time. I think, um, you know, I was I was doing a lot. I was doing really well for my age uh, playing. Right. And I think someone just kind of um, introduced my mother to it that maybe you should get him to audition. You know, he's, he's doing well. So I uh, just auditioned uh, from the recommendation of someone my mother knew. And then I was kind of introduced to it. And, and what year of school did you uh, begin at NOCA? Uh... That was 2003, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you were a junior or a sophomore? Or? Uh, sophomore. Yeah, I started out going uh, actually uh, with the, the summer programs. Ah. And then uh, Katrina was my senior year of high school. So I went back again for uh, like the, the makeup school year of Katrina. Um, right. So. Yeah. So um, that's a pretty good jaunt from Hanville to uh, down to yeah, uh, Bywater, I, well, man. You, know, <laughs> you, you, you get used to it. I, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's, it's a 25 minute ride, but I did a lot of things in the city, you know, play started that's around uh -huh. the time I started playing gigs as a teenager and also played for a church. One of the churches I played at uh, was here in Gentilly. So I used to just come back and forth uh -huh. a lot got used to making that drive. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, um, at NOCA, who, who was, uh, who was, uh, who did you study with there? Uh, uh Mr. Michael Palera, um, Mr. Alvin Batiste, uh, Mr. Mike Reiner, um, Mr. Chris Severin, um, who is, is actually a, you know, a guy I work with a lot okay. now. So it's great to, to be able to, travel the world and play gigs with, with guys who were, were, you know, who was my teacher. Um, but yeah, those, those are the main people. And you were in the jazz emphasis program there or the class? Yes, jazz. So you had started listening to jazz and gotten an interest in it by, by that sophomore year. No, well, really, Anoka was really my introduction to jazz. Um, I, you know, didn't, didn't necessarily grow up listening to jazz. Uh, uh, it was, it's weird because my, my, I had a lot of musical influences coming up, but not necessarily jazz. Like my uh -huh. grandmother loved to listen to gospel music. So I knew a lot of, you know, traditional gospel, Mahalia Jackson and my mother loved like soul and funk. So I got a lot of Earth, Wind and Fire and James Brown and my grandfather he liked like you know like the oldie station so i got like the beatles and and all of those guys so that's like what i heard coming up and then i had the you know the the music of my generation was, was like rap hip-hop r&b right. um but my my first jazz i really got into was was noka uh -huh. and uh was that through the uh instruction or uh 
you just started uh, hearing things when you started coming to New Orleans so so much. Uh, kind of in in the, through the instruction, and then as I as I kind of started meandering around New Orleans and, and and playing some different gigs, I got got exposed to it more. Yeah. Now, what kind of things did you hear at first that uh, you really liked as you began listening to jazz? Um, just the just the 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 ability to uh, improvise. Uh, uh, yeah. Just just you know. Imp- improvising over different chord changes, you know, just, just that was, was, which was, was, was a something I did, you know, that you just kind of pick up as you do in church or you just kind of pick up playing, but just like being able to improvise over any chord change, you know, in, in any situation that, that intrigued me. And just, just the theory behind it and the knowledge, uh, you know, I think jazz is like, it can be very complicated in terms of uh, like the theory and, right. and chords and scale. So that knowledge is like, is, is important. Yeah. Well, between uh, Michael Polera, Alvin Batiste, uh, Chris Severn and Mike Reiner, you get a lot of all of that. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and they all had great, they all were great teachers and they all had great teaching styles and all have a different perspective right. that that was needed. I mean, remember when I, I didn't, uh, my interaction with Mr. Bat, Mr. Alvin Batiste was really kind of one-on-one. He just would kind of just pull me uh, in, in his office and I, he was like, well, what do you want to learn? And I would give him something I would I want to learn or a recording and, you know, it'd be something modern or difficult or, or, you know, crazy, and and he would always give me a roundabout way of getting to that which I wanted to know. But in going this roundabout way, I would learn seven or eight different things. Right. So I was like, yeah, you know, I want to learn modal voicings, and he'd give me this sheet with these random kind of like, you know, um, kind of pentatonic scales. And I'm like, well, what does this have to do? with you know what i'm trying to learn but once i you know went on this journey i learned seven or eight different things just getting to the original thing i want to learn from yeah. him you know yeah well yeah they're all also a student in uh assessing what a student needs and how best they can yeah. receive it exactly yeah alvin uh harold batiste ellis marcellus all yeah. these guys had that had that skill yeah, I also had the privilege to study with Mr. Marcellus uh, to private instruction uh, at his at his home um, once I got to uh, college. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I always say NOCA is just like it's like uh, they just force feed you with so much great information and so much whether you want to be <laughs> a musician or not, you'll be great at playing jazz or whatever you go that far, whether, you know, Way you want to make it your career you right. you'll be good enough to to make it to you you have the skills to do it once you graduate you know yeah you'll have the tools if you decide to uh, put them to work yeah absolutely yeah so uh that was a, a a great experience for you say you began to play some in town during those years uh who with um i started out i got hooked up with delphio marcellus uh pretty early uh, and he eventually hooked me up with with Ellis. How I got uh, lessons with Ellis. I started out playing like a lot of gigs, you know, with 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 the people who I was at UNO oh, right. with, uh, like Sasha Mazakowski and and uh, Paul Thibodeau. There's some names that come to mind. Um, it was my early gigs were just super random, mostly with with guys I was I was in school with. Right. Well, uh, yeah. after, after NOCA, you went uh, straight to uh, UNO and, and made the change into, uh, into music? Yeah. Well, I originally went to, went, went to Southeastern University in, in Hammond. Hammond. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then that's how I kind of got the, the music scholarship. And then I was trying to go to Berkeley um, and ended up getting a scholarship just for, for tuition, but I still had to cover housing. Uh, and I just kind of auditioned for UNO, just kind of on a whim and ended up getting a full scholarship there. So it was like, go to 
go up to to Berkeley and you know maybe get into student loan debt, you know, oh, and trying to pay for housing, or go to you know where I had full paid scholarship, you know, tuition, housing, meal plan, books, everything. So I ended up going to you know. Yeah, and and uh, no slouch there. I mean, that department was pretty strong exactly. too. Exactly, exactly. Steve Mazikowski, Ed Peterson, uh, Brian Seeger, Victor Atkins, Jason Marsalis. Yeah, great faculty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Victor Atkins, uh, you know, one one of the great pianists around too, man. So absolutely, an, yeah, an, another wonderful influence on you. Yeah, he was my my piano teacher there. Yeah. Oh, Reds. Is a funny guy too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got a great sense of humor. Uh, so, did you go once you got at UNO? Um, did you dig into uh, into the scene a little more here in New Orleans? Then start. That's you were absolutely. talking about playing with those guys that you were in school with and such. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, started out uh, Stelfield Marcellus, Shannon Powell. Um, I was introduced to Shannon Powell. Actually, he came to UNO to do a clinic, uh, mm -hmm. and that was the first time I met him. And um, Donna's Bar and Grill, I knew uh, Charlie at, at Donna's Bar oh, and yeah. Grill. And I start, I would play, when I was playing there with kind of like random people or my peers, he, he, he gave me like my own night to do like my own trio there. Uh, Cause he, he, he was a big supporter of mine, a big fan of mine early on. So he had been telling Shannon about me, uh, Charlie uh, at Donna's. Right. And then when Shannon finally did the clinic, he's like, yeah, I've been hearing about you, you know, forever. So, you know, we got to sit in with him at the clinic. And he started hiring me then to kind of play some of the Sunday night, you know, the famous Sunday nights with him. All right. At Donna's Bar and Grill back in the day uh, before it closed. So he, he was like, you know, Mr. Shannon has been, you know, one of the first, I'd say, major artists in the city to really get me give me a chance, you know, to really learn. And, you know, that's right. playing with Shannon is, is you can't learn that in any school, any classroom, you know, that's, that's the best instruction, you know? Yeah. There's the, so, that's yeah. the, that's the whole history of jazz right there, man. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, since then, you know, <laughs> I've been all over the world uh, with Mr. Powell, but I got introduced uh, uh, with uh, Tops, Miss Topsy Chapman and her daughters uh, through Shannon and, uh, and did, you know, built worked with Bill Summers, and then started working with the Headhunters right. uh, through knowing Bill Summers. Uh, yeah, Glenn Andrews. Those are some of the people I, I played with a lot starting mm -hmm. out. You did a couple of years stint with the uh, Dirty Dozen. At some point, was that after you finished school, or was it during school? Yeah, yeah, that was right. I think right after I right after I finished, I started uh, touring regularly with the dirty dozen I played with the dirty dozen about three years and that and that's that's a whole nother <laughs> education you know wrote you know not only playing in the, in the rich music music musical heritage but road life you know right. learning learning firsthand road road life from from road legends you know so yeah, they've been doing it a long time. <laughs> yes, I think it's 40 something years now. Over 40 yeah. years now, yeah, 42 yeah. or 3 now, I think it's uh Yeah. Yeah. What? It, it, there's two bands in town, Astral Project and the Dirty Dozen that both have over 40 years together. Wow, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which Definitely. is 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 pretty uh, astounding really. Uh you know, to even know somebody for 40 years, let alone work with them. Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah. Unusual. So those 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 lessons and those stories you know i'll, I'll never forget so yeah right, right. a lot of good material for uh yeah material for a book or or, or a reality show or a comedy <laughs> series definitely yeah. <laughs> yeah any of any any or all of the above which could yet come uh, ladies and gentlemen so stay right. tuned exactly uh, well um on your uh We'll jump ahead a little bit and ask something just kind of looping back to the period we're talking about uh uh for your first record you did almost all of the music except for uh i think a cut of in, on green dolphin street mm -hmm. what about writing music is that something you were doing at this point uh what during in school or how did that start for you uh, well yeah we had we had kind of uh projects in school to write a piece you know doing this you know type of 
write a straight ahead piece or write a piece moving, you know, but I, I don't know. I've, I've always had a passion for writing and, and producing. Um, mm-hmm. So that, that my first CD was just kind of like, it was kind of all over the place. Cause you know, I, I, right. I'm interested in different genres. So uh, I just kind of wrote freely and it just came out the way it came out. My next CD though is, is, is more kind of concentrated in, in one direction. And what direction would you say that is? New, New Orleans, New Orleans music and uh, New Orleans piano. Uh, oh, cool. As a, as a right now that there are 10 songs and uh, eight of them are songs I wrote with, with words uh, and me singing. So that's, right. that's also a new, uh, new venture. Well, back back uh, when you were playing in church, was it always just playing, or did you sing some? I did a little. I did a little singing. Uh, you know, you know, when you go, sometimes you go around from church to church. There's a need, well. We we need an organist, but we also need a choir director too. Right. So you know, you you become the organist and the choir director and the drummer and you know all of these <laughs> all of these uh, jobs in one. So I did a little singing and used to work with with the different choir, teaching the parts and, and you know, but that that's about as far as it went. Uh, what about writing lyrics? Uh, is that something you've been doing for longer than these most recent projects? No, recent. Re- uh, I've been writing for this this last CD probably the last year and a half, and that's really just a new a new uh, a new area. adventure for me. Yeah, yeah. writing lyrics, but. Uh, I think it's. I think uh, people will enjoy it when, when yeah. the CD comes out. The record is a uh, like five piece horn sections, guitar, percussion, drums, piano, organ. You know, lots of lots of everything. Lots of New Orleans. Sounds like a lot. Lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're on also uh, the uh, Uptown Jazz Orchestra record, uh, most most recent one, Jazz Party. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But so I love that tune, man. It's a, the great, yeah, yeah it's a great, great record. Both, both of the records uh, that we've done are really great records. Make America Great Again and... Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, jazz Party. Uh, so uh, you've been, you've been uh, do, you, do you think writing is, is uh, going to be something that has become a, um, a, a growing interest of yours over time? Absolutely. Uh, I'm I'm writing a lot of music uh, these days, and also working with a, a number of artists. Uh, I have a I have a recording studio now, and I'm actually in the middle right now of producing uh, a few records from other artists, and they're not just like jazz, um, R and B, EDM, and dance mm-hmm. music. Um, also, is is there's a lot of things I'm interested in. I'm producing and, and writing and working with right now and recording so well in one sense i think it's a great time to uh, to be a producer in that you can build a studio that won't break the bank you know you can get a right. pretty nice sound out of right. some affordable gear absolutely uh yeah with 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 the preservation hall band um we got an endorsement uh with universal audio oh, and cool. they supplied me with a lot of uh quality recording equipment to make some really quality records um, and I've also gotten into uh, mixing and mastering also uh, music. So stay tuned. Yeah. Um, well, uh, after after you came, came off that uh, long stint with the Dirty Dozen, what uh, sort of was your next, uh, what would you say was the next uh, step in your career or what happened next? Well, I, I really focused more on uh, just uh, working as a leader. And that's right around the time my record came out and, and doing some gigs with my own band and performing my own music uh, really was, was my direction. Yeah. And, uh, and um, you maintaining that, uh, who, who have you been working with? Who, who would you say, if you could put your ideal band together right now, Kyle, who would, who would be in that? Um, well, who works with me right now is uh, bass player Kenaniah Turner. We actually met uh, playing at a church. Uh, we were playing at the same church uh, at one point in time. Um, I'm actually uh, kind of before the pandemic, I was playing at a church with, with Herlin Riley oh. at his church. Uh, so if I could have uh, Ken and Herlin on, on the same gig or, you know, or Shannon Powell, 
that's that's really all you need, you know. Right. A, a, a lot of music could be made, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, they're both, you know, one thing I like about both those guys, Herlin, uh, maybe even more so than Shannon, is he's playing melodies over there on the kit all the time anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And both of them grew up playing in church. And playing tambourine. I mean, two of the yeah. best tambourine players you ever heard. Yeah. I've, I've got a song on my record where uh, mm -hmm. Herlin is on drums and Shannon is playing tambourine. Oh man, that's cool. So, yeah, just, I've always wanted to get them both on on one song, and you know, yeah, great to accomplish that. Well, I've I've had the good fortune to hear you with all kind of people at uh, Snug Harbor, especially you know, Topsy Chapman, Herlin Riley, you name mm -hmm. it, a, a wide range of people. And mm -hmm. you were telling me a little bit earlier about the uh, the new record. Let's talk a little bit more about what you've just done there in your studio. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. t tell us a bit about the. Have you got a title, a working title for the? release i don't have a title uh just yet i'm i'm still still um working with some different titles still working with some different titles over the the songs i just recently kind of just got it all completed last week just kind of put putting it all together now but what I, what I found a lot of success in in my band just being like a modern voice of of new orleans piano you know because new orleans has a great history of, of pianists from Jelly Roll Martin to Fats Domino to Alan Toussaint, Dr. John, Henry Butler, you know. So I'm, I'm just interested in, in carrying that tradition forward. And that's kind of really what, what's going on with this record. It's kind of like trying to take the things that those people have done, but, but bring it to today. Hmm. Yeah, D digging into that, uh... Mew you, which like like so many of these things, is uh, still a, a great form of expression. You know, it's not like uh, a museum piece to play in that style. It's a way of approaching music more so than mm -hmm. than uh, just a uh, imitation of anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just you know, I really took a lot of time because recently I've been doing a lot of solo piano. Uh, gigs, so I took a lot of time to really study, you know, the music of James Booker and Professor Longhair, and kind of learn a lot of their music, uh, and perform a lot of their music, and then kind of take bring that to to what I want to say and what I want to do, and and make it relevant to to what's going on today, yeah, with music is yeah. is kind of the the idea behind the record. Yeah, get the, get uh, that feeling in your hands and then uh, start telling your own stories. Yeah. With yeah. Then, yeah. Take it, take it to, uh, take it to another place. Yeah. Well, that, that's been the uh, beauty of jazz generally uh, throughout mm -hmm. its history in New Orleans. You, you hear good bands today, great bands playing traditional jazz, but they're not uh, doing what doing it the way it would have been done a hundred years ago. They're, mm -hmm. they're honoring that tradition, but they're telling stories of today and tomorrow. Yeah. I think, yeah, before you can do that, you first, you first got to learn, learn the roots and learn where it comes from and learn, you know, how to do that correctly. And then, then you can take it to wherever you want to take it. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Get, yeah. get the uh, vocabulary and the tools and then build what you want to, what you want to build. Definitely. Uh, I, I look really looking forward to hearing this, uh, this uh, new record. Yeah. That yeah when, 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 whenever kind of things stabilize, again and probably be ready right. to, to be released get it get it on out uh well what about uh you've obviously been uh, making taking good advantage of uh using your time well during this this period mm -hmm. you've made a record and produced some others is uh, mm -hmm. anything else going on have, do you have a chance to perform at all i know you did a, a, a one of the e uh salute yeah. for snow harbor I did one of the e-salutes uh talking about mr marsalis uh he, he was a, a great uh, influence of mine uh, coming up and uh, having the opportunity to study with him personally, you know, you, you really, he, he too was, you know, the roundabout way right. of teaching, right. you know, I, I remember I was at UNO and I want to learn, you know, some, you know, McCoy time or learn how to do this, learn how to do that. And we would, you know, teach, I expected for him to teach me some scales or some licks or some chord changes or some, you just, you know, something up. But we did very little playing at the piano. We would sit and listen to records and talk about life and, you know, talk about the life that these different musicians uh, lived 
and it, you know, in, in a kind of a roundabout way, he helped me get to like, just really the source of what this really is about. You want to learn this, this is, this is kind of the path you take in your life or the life you live to, to arrive at this place where you can play this and, and, and express this and express that. Um, yeah. 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 He was always uh, a, a very astute and astute observer and a, a straight shooter about, you know, he'd encourage you, uh, but if he didn't think you had the, the skills to cut it, he'd let you know about that too. Right, right, right. Most definitely. Uh, and, you know, it was, it was very, very, very needed uh, as a youngster. Yeah. Uh, but I, I also, also did uh, the WWOZ Piano Night. Oh, uh, cool. This was another. But I've just kind of been doing virtual, virtual uh, shows and doing a lot of recording. Yeah. And a lot of music. Have, um, well, once you're able to get this uh, next record out, you, you uh, foresee continuing to produce things maybe in this same vein? Or will you have, do you have another totally different project in mind? Um, as, in terms of, of my music, I, I really want to focus on New Orleans music and focus on uh, New Orleans piano. Yeah. And just, I think there's just so much uh, that, that the world doesn't know about that, uh, you know, New Orleans has a lot to offer. Um, and I, I want to definitely contribute to that. I'll definitely still continue producing other pro projects, but just in terms of my particular band, my music, that's, that's, that's what I want to deal with. Well, that's a, um, it's, it's a, um, a rich and wide field to endeavor in Kyle. So Absolutely. I, and I think you are somebody who can advance it some. So keep at it, daddy. -o. I definitely will. All right, man. Thanks a lot for joining us today. It's been a lot of fun. Appreciate it. Thanks yeah. so much. Yeah. See you later. Later.